Klopp it. Action. Guitarist and guitar host, guitar moves host. Ex guitarist of. Yo, welcome to another video. This one is the guitarist's guide to stone rock. Stone rock, aka stoner doom, stoner metal, and desert rock is a genre that combines together elements, uh, metal, psychedelic rock, I believe, and also acid rock. Ironically enough, the stoner reference is something that a lot of these stoner bands actually don't like. They prefer being labeled something else or maybe not labeled at all. Like mentioned in the beginning, a lot of music enthusiasts love to use the other very synonymous genre of desert rock instead, but let's not get into the whole wormhole of genres, okay? In this video, I'll look at some of the top rated stoner rock albums according to the website Rate Your Music. And the goal here is to find out exactly why these albums are so highly regarded and what's so special about the stoner rock guitar sound. So let's get into it. There are a handful of things that categorize the stone rock sound. The songs usually have this very slow to mid tempo. The overall tone is very mid and bass focused and there's usually a lot of fuzz elements, fuzz effects involved. There's also usually more emphasis on the groove of the riffs. So a lot of the riffs and bass lines are, are very groovy and you'll see what I mean. Some of these stoner bands have a tendency to also copy the production style of some of the older psychedelic heavy metal bands, such as Black Sabbath. They try to heavily imitate this album right here, or at least there's a lot of people pointing to this album. <laughs> Stone Rock first became prominent in the public eye during the 90s with bands such as Monster Magnet, Caius, and Sleep. But with its heavy influence of hard rock and blues, there's a lot of people that point towards bands from the 1960s such as Black Sabbath and Blue Chair as some of the first originators of the genre. Now, as mentioned earlier in this genre guide right here, I want to talk about five of the top rated albums from Rate Your Music. These are not the top five, just so you know, because if they were, then I would just go on and talk about Caius and Queens of the Stone Age. Those bands occupied the top five. And I wanted to have a bit more diversity when it comes to the different sounds, the different variations of the stoner rock genre. With that being said, the first album out is Clutch's Blast Tyrant. Clutch is a band from Frederick, Maryland, US. They were formed back in 91, and so far they've released over 12 albums in various genres such as funk, hard rock, blues, and of course, stoner rock. This album, Blast Tyrant, is their sixth album, and it's arguably one of the first albums that really, really helped them in terms of getting more exposure. The third track, The Mob Goes Wild, was played at several radio stations across the US and definitely helped them get more out there. I'm not a fan of Clutch. I haven't really listened to them all that much. I remember listening to their debut album two or three months ago, but then I just let it be. I listened to it once or twice and it didn't make that much of an impact on me then and there but I was still excited to check out another album and give them another chance. And I have to say, I, I got a really good first impression. The opening track, Muir, Muir, the opening track, Mercury, is, is an amazing track. It really reminds me a bit of Mastodon. There's more hard rock tendencies in here if you compare them to bands like Caius, which is a little bit heavier than this. Also, the mythical lyrics here really reminded me a lot of some progressive bands, like, again, like Mastodon. So I got really hooked on this album, like, from from the get-go. Now, I, I kind of find out, I fi find out, I found out that the opening track wasn't exactly a very accurate representation of the rest of the album. Mercury is 
more or less the only progressive leaning song, the only song that leans very hard into that genre, while the other songs leans more into blues, funk, and hard rock, which at times can be really, really groovy and, and amazing. Out of all these albums that I'm gonna talk about in this video, this album has the most rock and roll aesthetic to it. And I see why people like that, but it wasn't my cup of tea. My favorite tracks off of this record are Cypress Groove, Spleen Merchant, Subtle Hustle, Ghost, and La Curandera. And my absolute favorite, obviously, is Mercury. Alright, next up we have Heavy Rocks by Boris. This is the only Japanese band that we have on the list. They were formed in Tokyo back in 92. And these are by far the most prolific guys that we also have on the list in terms of just releasing albums. They released over 20 studio albums in addition to a lot of compilations, EPs, and other things. I read somewhere that they were inspired by the Melvins because their name, Boris, is apparently the name of one of their songs. I really haven't listened that much to Melvin's myself, but there again, another band that a lot of people label stoner rock, whether they like it or not. Although Boris never managed to take off in their home country, they gained a name for themselves and a reputation in the US. This was a reputation that helped them collaborate with and open for acts such as Nine Inch Nails, and Sunno. This album, Heavy Rocks, was released back in 2002, Songs for the Deaf Year, and it's apparently one of the only Boris albums that were pressed to vinyl. On first listen, it bears a lot of resemblance to Kaya's. Some of my favorite tracks off of this record were Soft Age and Rattlesnake, but I guess my all-time favorite, or my first impression favorite, would have to be Dinosaur. In my opinion, it's one of the most energetic songs on the whole record, and it's definitely one of the most fun riffs to play on the guitar. <laughs> Next up, we have Dopes to Infinity by Monster Magnet. This is a hard rock slash psychedelic slash metal slash stoner rock. And when I say stoner rock, this is probably one of the few bands with the stoner rock label that would actually accept the label. The band was formed back in 98 and came out of Red Bank, New Jersey, US. And um, about the label, Stoner Rock, they released two tapes that clearly put them in this box. They released two demo cassettes named Forget About Life, I'm High on Dope, and I'm Stoned, What Are You Gonna Do About It? <laughs> Arguably one of the more traditional stoner bands out there. Dopes to Infinity was the third album that they released and was also one of the first albums that gained them some high chart, high chart rankings. Negasonic Teenage Warhead is apparently the single on this album and it's the first song that really struck a chord with me. And the reason why it does that is because it strikes this weird balance between 60 psychedelia, blues and grunge. I'm hearing a lot of similarities to bands such as Cream, Nirvana, there's some, a perfect circle in here, believe it or not, but I can hear some similarities to, to one of their songs. But the similarity to Cream is, is insane here. I mean, it's almost like they ripped off a song by them. There's this song by Cream called Tales of Brave Ulysses. And uh, if you listen to the verses of both those songs, if you listen to the, the guitar melody, the guitar phrases, it's the exact same thing. So I was like, huh, isn't that cream? <laughs> now, I've, I've never listened to Monster Magnet before. I know that my father is a big fan of them. He at least has a few of their albums. And I gotta say, it's actually one of those bands that I, I don't know why I didn't check them out before, because this is actually pretty good. It's one of the on this whole list, this is probably the album that I find to be the most authentic and outstanding. So I'm, I'm definitely going to go back and listen to this. Ah, 
And now it's time for an absolute classic, Queens of the Stone Ages, Songs for the Deaf. Now, I'm pretty biased towards this album because I grew up listening to this when I was like 13 and 14. The ironic thing is that although it's one of my favorite albums, if not the favorite album of all time for me, it's an album that I, in the beginning, I didn't like it at all. Now, if you're not familiar with Queens of the Stone Age, they were founded back in 96, and the one and only person who started it was Josh Homme. He's been the only consistent member of the band ever since the beginning. He's, by the way, also the ex-guitarist of Caius, which we will talk about a little bit later. Although the band experienced mainstream success with Ray Tadar back in 2000, it wasn't until Songs for the Deaf was released in 2002 that they became one of the biggest bands of the 2000s. We'll both find the album on some of the top rock albums of the 2000s lists, and some of the lists of the best concept albums of that time as well. Picking a favorite song from this album is really hard, but since I have to do it, I guess I'll have to pick Song for the Dead because it's just one of the most fun th fun, th 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 fun songs to play on the guitar. Alright, the final album that I'll introduce you to on this top stoner rock guide thingy that I'm doing is Blues for the Red Sun by Caius. Caius is an American metal band formed in 1987 in Paul Springs, California. Blues for the Red Sun was the band's second album and although it didn't sell that much, it was the album that actually gained them a lot more acceptance in the metal scene and uh, they sort of gained a reputation for being a very outstanding band with this album. It helped them gain so much publicity that they were able to go on tour with none other than Metallica in Australia. I'm quite familiar with Caius's albums from before. I'm most fam familiar with uh, Welcome to Sky Valley that's my all-time favorite album. I like that one better than this one, but that's simply because I have a more of an epiphany for progressive rock, and Welcome to Sky Valley leans more in that direction. Now, with that being said, there's tons and tons of amazing songs on Blues for the Red Sun as well. You have Green Machine, Thong Song, 50 Million Year Trip. These are all amazing songs. I guess my favorite has to be Thumb, though. There's no denying the sheer power of that riff. And like guitarist and guitar moves host Matt Sweeney once said. And then what about doom do beta weed or ferny hern or honey hang? This album was a slow burner for me, but absolutely a classic when it comes to stoner rock. The thing that makes all of these albums so outstanding is that they have their very own sound. Sure enough, there were some of the bands like Black Sabbath and Blue Cheer in the 60s and early 70s that kind of had this sound already in place, but it didn't it wasn't really fleshed out and explored to its fullest potential before these bands and these albums came out. I really, the, the reason why I'm attracted to this genre is really because of everything put together. You have the fuzz, you have the grooves, no bullshit riffs that just pound you in the face. It kind of takes the blues and the hard rock and the psychedelia of the 60s and 70s and turns it on its back, basically. So stoner rock, desert rock, it's cool. That's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to Dead Meat and Christian O'Day. Thank you so much for being my top patrons. By the way, if you go over to Patreon, I have some polls over there. You can click the link below. I have some polls where you can vote for Queens of the Stone Age songs. What songs do you think I should make guitar lessons about? I have a library that I want to create over on Patreon of guitar lessons. So make sure you click that. If that sounds interesting, click that link and I'll see you on the other side. Cheers.